Good afternoon. Welcome to our Solar Plaza webinar. Today, we're going to be presenting the growth path ahead for the Nordic solar PV market with a great speaker, and I'm happy to be hosting your webinar today. To give you some insight on the agenda of the day, please know that I'm going to present a brief introduction, and then we'll have a great presentation by Josephine Berg, a research and anal analysis manager at S&P Global, and at the end, we'll have time for Q&A. So I invite you to put in your questions on the Q&A box on your side panel. To give you a brief introduction, Solar Plaza is a knowledge sharing, a knowledge sharing platform for the solar industry. And our core business is to accelerate the sustainable energy transition with knowledge, webinars, and our conferences. So this uh, webinar will also be in route for our Solar Plaza Summit Nordics conference coming up later this month. So keep an eye out at the end for more tidbits on that conference. Please also be aware we have our Solar Plaza Consultancy. We offer many solution services, so I invite you to check out our website. As I mentioned, we will be hosting a conference focused primarily on this Nordics market and all that's happening and what's up and coming. And by being a participant in this webinar, you can claim a 10% discount on the ticket fee. And we will be sharing these slides with you later on if you'd like to check it out. But I invite you to, if you're really interested in the market and would like to meet uh, some of our speakers face to face, then this is the place to be. For today though, we will be having our webinar virtually. And I forgot to just to mention that our event in the Nordics will be taking place in Copenhagen the 29th of September, so that you are aware. But right now, before we kick off, I wanted to let you know that we do offer technical support. If you're having any issues with audio, with the visual, please feel free to send a note on the on the questions button of your of your guide, and we'll help you the best we can and I really invite you to put in your questions because the more interactive uh, this webinar can be the better and Josephine will be here to answer your questions. We will be sharing the recordings and the slides of this webinar after it takes place so you can feel free to be on the watch out for that. Today, I would like to introduce Josephine Berg and I invite her to pop up on screen. And uh, not only does she have over 12 years of experience as an analyst in the solar power industry, she is Swedish as well and can provide some great insights on the Nordics market. I will let you, Josephine, introduce yourself further and what are you doing at SP Global as well as take it away with your presentation. So please, you have the floor and thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Lorena. It's a it's a pleasure to be to be here today. Take some break from our 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 heavy heavy duty work on forecast updates that we're doing doing this work this week. So it's a lot of number crunching, and it's good to be come out and come out and talk to talk to people and and uh, have this have this presentation. As we said said when we were preparing for the for the call, like the Nordics, I mean, it's really an up and coming up and coming region there's been it's been some strong demand there over the past years but we really see a strong future and i think the event that you're organizing and really putting more focus on the on the region i think that's something that's really necessary to to support further further development and to give more uh, more companies access to the access to the market to really drive this drive this future so i think this is really great work your great work you're doing and I think it's going to be a be a really good event. In terms of in terms of my of myself, I think you introduced introduced me pretty well already. I lead the I lead our research on the global PV demand, and I I usually focus mainly on Spain because I'm based in based in Barcelona. But I've been working with our Nordics colleague to a, a lot a lot to to work on the work on the Nordics market since I am I am Swedish and sometimes I get a more of a, First hand, first hand inside, inside news and information that's so important in our in our work. Before we start the presentation, I'd be curious to hear from the from the audience. So we have a have a poll question for you. So in five years, so by the end of 2026, which market do you think will have the most PV installed? So if you if you pick one of these, then we'll get a feel for what uh, what the what your view is on the market
SOEC, Denmark, Denmark, Sweden. Um, quite, you know, a bit, a bit more, a bit, bit more on on Denmark, Denmark. Some, a few positives on on Finland. Maybe a few, maybe one, one or two there, and um, and Sweden coming up. Which we actually, we actually have Denmark and Sweden in our forecast. We're pretty even with Sweden actually overtaking Denmark as as the biggest market in a in a few years. Of course, this will all depend on a lot of policy issues. But as we're going to talk talk further, we see Sweden being the market where we will have both a strong growth in self consumption and um, more utility scale util, utility scale PV happening. Denmark will still be a strong utility scale market, but Sweden will have more of a distributed growth across all, all segments. But we'll come to that we'll come to that in, throughout the presentation. So we'll go a bit from the broader broader picture down into into the details. I mean we can have to talk about the energy independence, we're going to talk about the global PV market, looking at the Europe, European specific situation and then we'll dive into the dive into the Nordics. I don't think I have to say much about the situation we're in right now. Um, I don't think you can can't read a newspaper without any with any reference to you know on the first page to energy electricity prices. We need to save it. We need to save energy. There's you know there's cap on cap on gas prices. Like how do we alleviate the impact on consumers? What's going to happen this winter? I and mean, there's so much uncertainty in the in the energy markets in the energy markets right now. And at least in Sweden now heading heading into the elections this Sunday, energy electricity prices is a key key talking point or key discussion point. Oh yeah, between the between the parties. Like how do you how do you secure competitive electricity prices uh, in the in the market, both for consumers and for the for the industry. And of course that comes the with the other can, the other side of this coin is that European uh, solar installations are booming, and we see a lot of you know. I have a lot of friends that are saying, "Oh, you work with solar, right?" Like people that never talked to me before about the about what I what I do. Now they're installing solar panels. They're looking at at different offerings, and it's really you know part of people's conscience that uh, you can actually build. Build solar, you can save on electricity. Both in Spain, where I live, and in in Sweden, when I was there this summer, definitely a conversation whether we have constantly. In terms of electricity prices, also not going to show you any details. I think you you might be seeing at your own electricity bills. Um, same is happening in the Nordic Nordic countries, depending a bit on the the electricity consumers and what kind of contracts they have, but electricity pricing is a big concern. And electricity pricing is so volatile now. So on the Nord Pool, on the Nord Nord Pool um, uh, prices, August one year ago, the ranges was about 40 to 90 euros per megawatt hour. In August this year, we had prices ranging from three to 450 euros. So really ups ups and downs, many peaks, and a lot of a lot of volatility, volatility, which again affects consumer prices but it also makes it more interesting for large large power pro large power projects and how to secure how to get more electricity into the market and to be able to benefit from, from all these all these prices on a global on a global level uh, PV installations continue growing this is our forecast from June uh, I said that we're now number crunching to publish our next forecast in a week and we are ready to increase these numbers uh, greatly like our original original thought for this year has been around 250 gigawatts of PV installations in the world this year um, that is that is likely likely to to increase especially 2023 we expect that to be an even stronger growth growth year than than we expected expected so far Right now, module pricing is an is a big issue, but we see that that could you know that could improve somewhere in in 2023, which lead to much a lot more installations 2023 and and onwards. 
so it's you, well if you've been in the if you've been in the solar sector sector for a while like there's right now we're in, we're in this in a situation now where we don't really see it's hard to identify where the limit is gonna is gonna be and in what year things are the installations are gonna flatten flatten out and we're gonna have less growth Europe like I said it's booming we're re definitely raising 2022 uh, drastically we have we had a forecast of 50 gigawatt of installations so this is DC installations uh, this year uh, we, we we already had more than that shipped to Europe from China in terms of modules so definitely need to get that get that number up and it's when you look at when you look at the local local situation even if you're adding you're adding growth there are always local barriers there are companies that are complaining about the labor shortage there are different components that you can't get I and mean, it's hard work for everyone doing this but is there are also so many different companies doing it there are so many people that are asking to get solar panels there are large large plants being installed despite the high pricing and that's that's really where we where we see the where we see the boom but a, lot, a big share of this boom is going to be in in distributed generation And there is room to grow. I mean, at the end of uh, end of 2020, PV was only 4% of the European uh, electricity mix. So there is definitely room room to grow, and we will see a strong strong increase over the over the coming over the coming years. So we have about 13% of net generation by by 2030, and it could become a lot a lot more now after uh, with all this volatility that we're that we're seeing. I mentioned costs. Um, we just recently published our our cost um, cost update, the capex update for PV. And in Europe, we're now you know we're above 2018 2018 prices. So it's uh, so it's it's really a lot of lot of pressure everywhere every, everywhere like in all in all segments. The distributed generation segment, of course, can absorb more some of this uh, this increased pricing, and we also end, see end consumers not being that. Uh, I'd say they're not a they're they're pretty comfortable paying what the the prices that are that are on the market right now. The most important is to actually get the system installed because lead times can be pretty pretty long pretty long. But it is a very you know it's a very complicated situation, and we talked to a lot of a uh, lot of developers that are you know that are very concerned about their projects but with electricity prices increasing ppa prices also following there's still a, there's still demand for pv even at even at this price and what one thing just more on the capex is that what we see is that like i said distributed generation is less impacted because of the the modules is a smaller part of the total capex, but in the commercial segment, which has been reached a lot of efficiencies over the past over the past years, module prices are now becoming an increased part of the part of the capex. So that's also important to watch for for installers in in that segment to be able to price the end product right. Now if we go into the go into the Nordics in particular. The Nordics. So here we do. I'm not. You know, don't want to. Like, don't want to exclude. Uh, exclude uh, or be exclusive. But we're focusing here on Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway, as you saw in the in the poll question. So the the ones that are connected to the to the European European electricity electricity grid. And these markets, they're already pretty. The region is pretty renewable already. There's a lot of hydro. I mean, Norway is, is uh, you know, it's almost all all hydropower. We've had, we've had a lot of onshore wind coming online over the, you know, the over the past decades. But what we see coming strongly coming forward is solar and uh, and offshore wind. Those are the two segments that are going to get a you know. Have a bigger impact on the electricity mix going forward, and we see already that you know hydropower is um, it's a very it's 
it's a big source of power for the region, but this summer it's been very dry in some areas. Norway's had problem with, uh, with some dams, dams drying out or not having enough, maybe not drying up, but not having enough enough power given the given the high high power prices so it's not been as hydropower hasn't been as accessible as it's um, or accessible or reliable as it's usually been and that also gives you know more more opportunities for other electricity sources such as uh, such as solar and solar could even become a bigger part of the electricity mix So the solar the solar market what does it what does it look like now in terms of what's been installed until 2021 we have Denmark and Sweden as the big the big markets Finland getting there and Norway being the being on the on the lower lower end or trailing trailing behind Denmark was really the first solar market to take off about 10 years ago because of they had a because they had a net metering scheme that led to a big inf big installations of residential and commercial systems then that system was was curbed which also uh, curbed the the installations in that segment there are also now there are there are a lot of limitations to uh, to rooftop solar in Denmark in terms of taxation um, having to you know if having to pay uh, pay fees for the electric for the electricity used on the grid the size limitations you know kind of warrant that that new projects will be pretty pretty low electricity prices in Denmark are high and would justify you know a stronger solar market right right now but over the, over the what we've seen over the past like past years it's mainly been in the yeah, it's it hasn't been so much residential and commercial, but it, all the focus has been on utility scale, and that's really where Denmark has has taken off U utility scale. And then we're talking mainly unsubsidized utility scale projects with PPAs, and that's been really taking taking off, benefiting from high 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 whole, high wholesale electricity prices in you know, Denmark's interconnections. It's really been a sweet spot to work for utility scale developers in the region. Sweden, on the other hand, has had very little utility scale PV um, so far, and has been really concentrating on the distributed generation segment. It started off with um, with investment grants that were a bit complicated to get, or there was a kind of a high demand demand for it. Then they changed that to tax rebates, and over the past two, three years, Sweden has done a lot of incremental improvements to their system to allow for more distributed generation. So the, right now you can install systems up to 500 kilowatts and um, you can use, a, there's, a, yeah, there's a green green deduction scheme that offers tax rebates of 15% for, for installations. Um, those systems that are up to 500 kilowatts, they're exempted from energy taxes. And it's really you have feed like well feed in tariffs you have tariff agreements with your with your electricity distributor that will buy this your surplus electricity you can sell electricity now to your neighbor i mean there there are a lot of lot of pro programs there are a lot of schemes to support distributed ge generation in sweden and that's really led to a boom over the past year and now with electricity prices being what they are we see that that segment really growing strongly um, compared well, compared to the the other Nordic Nordic markets. Utility scale, on the other hand, it's been complicated. It's um, the, yeah, the, it, it, developments haven't started until pretty recently. So a lot of the projects are still in development phase. Basis, it wasn't there wasn't so much so strong interest until a few years ago. So that's still a very early early segment the the authorities are also not really clear on how how they should treat these systems should they need to go through all the permitting that larger power plants need to go through or and on the local on a local level what kind of permits do you need there's a lot of back and forth there for all the for all the big projects and there's no stream there hasn't been any streamlining or 
so 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 far this there has been little streamlining of processes and that's ongoing right now which is why we're going to see sweden get more utility scale pv in a in the coming in the coming years finland has also been uh, more on the on the resident residential and commercial commercial segment it's been uh, still a still a rather rather small small uh, market there have been some investment subsidies you know some sub subsidies for agriculture projects and some tax credits but not not as not as streamlined and not as strong as as in as in sweden and we see finland still like it's i i saw i i was in finland this summer i saw more residential installations than i've done before but that's there were still very there's still very few and then norway like i said it's trailing trailing behind mainly traditionally because to low low electricity prices which hasn't really justified and self self consumption we've seen more of an off grid market um, some some systems have been installed also by really enthusiasts like you really want to go green but uh, but over overall norway hasn't had really that that push or that for for neither the the distributed generation market or for the utility scale market and also now we see very little utility scale activity in norway what we do see going forward though is that with this new electricity prices, there's a big discussion in Norway on electricity prices. They do have a support scheme uh, to lower the impact of the increased electricity prices on the end user bill. So that that still you know lowers the incentive for for installing installing solar. But all depending on what the price levels will be, maybe that Norway will be more become more interesting. But we still see it as a as a smaller market today let's see here so looking at utility scale pv this is where we have you know a very dynamic dynamic market Denmark's already installed a lot of um, you know more than a more than a gigawatt of uh, of utility scale utility scale pv and more is um, more is more is coming so we have some statistics here from our pv project database so we follow pv projects across the across the world and in order to assess also to help us assess our pipe the pipeline to, to guide our forecasts and if we look here we see that the projects that we have definitely denmark is the strongest market here up to the up to the left you have denmark projects here in denmark uh, sweden and finland And we see there that there's like four four gigawatts of projects under you know permitting permitting and being planned. And we will will be interesting to see how these projects will be able to advance advance going forward. And of course, there are also other projects that are still in a very early stage planning that haven't been been made official yet. And what we see here is that a big share of these projects, they are big projects. So we have three gigawatts of projects that are larger than 100 megawatts in size. I'm cu I'm curious to see how all of those developers will pull it off because um, it can be it I think I would I think it can be tr challenging from a permitting permitting perspective in some some areas. I mean in southern southern Sweden there's a lot of discussion now as well as how do you use agricultural land. Um, yeah, what do you what do you accept? What kind of land do you accept for 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 PV PV plants? And there is, you know, we're getting that that conflict that we see in a lot of other markets as well. Some of these some of these announced uh, really large plants, I think they will take a time some time to to move ahead. But others others are going to be, you know, have I don't want to say have more luck, but be more be, be more diligent in their so I'm I lost control of the presentation. Um, if Tom Lorena, do you have? It? 
Hi, Josephine. Just stepping in to mention that indeed we have put the presentation back on screen and you should have control again. And I'm yeah. trying to return to the slide where you were on. Yeah, yeah. I'm I I'm 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 in good I think I have it now. Yeah. Perfect. Please yep. do go on. And there down to the right you see some of the companies that are you know, that are that are developing projects uh, projects in the region. So we see, you know, a lot of Dan projects having coming from Denmark, you know, that started off started off in Denmark, and now moving on to develop develop projects there. Some come from the wind sector as well, and are now trying their luck on in solar PV. As also wind projects are are complicated to to develop, and we also see more international international interest in the Nordic market. And I think that's where we're going to see. A lot of movement in the coming in the coming years between projects, uh, projects changing hands, um, new entrants going into the market. There's all over the you know all over the the world we see this big interest for capital to get you know to looking for investments in any market. And with this with this pipeline that can you know that's going to grow substantially over the next over the next years. I think there's going to be more. More a more in, bigger influx also of international international companies here. Uh, I mentioned it briefly, but most of these projects, even there has been a bit, you know, there were a few tenders in Denmark, but the last tender round they had in Denmark didn't get any applications. So everyone is really focusing on on unsubsidized projects, so looking for PPAs, and this is what we see in our in our PPA database, that in the Nordics, we, it, it used to be pure wind, wind, wind market like P, wind PPAs together with green certificates, and now we're seeing solar really picking up in terms of the share of uh, the share of PPAs, and I think that's a really good sign for the future for the future market to see this this big developments. And also, you're not going to sign a PPA unless your project you know, is if you're, until, unless you're confident that your project is going to go ahead, so this really shows a good sign that this, the Nordic solar market is definitely moving ahead, and that's also what we see in our forecast. When and this is where we come back to the poll question: so will it be Sweden or will it be Denmark? Denmark, very strong utility scale market. With we, we forecast almost five gigawatt of utility scale installations in Denmark um, over the next uh, the next five years but right now we don't see the regulation be there to really drive a strong um, distributed generation market so residential and commercial things can change things can change and they can change very qu quickly I mean it's enough to change a tax or um, in allow allow larger systems to be installed and Given the high electricity price in Denmark, that sector is ready is ready to take off. But right now we are we're still conservative on our outlook for Denmark's distributed generation. Sweden, on the other hand, there we see you know all segments being quite uh, quite equal in terms of in terms of size, with the utility scale market really taking off now over the coming over the coming years. We expect regulation to, to become easier. Um, like the, the the regional responsible, so different authorities, they're getting familiar with with solar. There's more streamlining. They know how to approach um, approach projects. So permitting is going to be become easier. Not for all projects. Like I like I said, it's going to be to depend a, you know, it's like always it depends a lot on your specific on project specifics. But overall, Sweden is becoming more comfortable with uh, with utility scale PV, and there's such a need for electricity now and especially in in southern southern sweden where the electricity prices you know, are multifold higher than in the in the north of the in the north of the country and that's really where we see sweden growing growing strong so sweden sweden and denmark right now our bet is on on sweden overall but they're going to be very very similar similar markets in in overall size and in finland we are we expect um, Expect some utility scale projects. We've seen some announcements. Uh, we do expect more than a you know gigawatt, like a gigawatt, gigawatt and a half of utility scale PV coming into Finland. 
and for the for the residential and commercial sector again there is there is potential for there's upside potential here but right now we don't we don't see the legislation there really to to drive to drive the market but like i said that can change quickly and norway like i mentioned it can depending on how electricity prices evolve and regulation norway is also a market that can take off quickly and you will get a lot more information of course on the on the solar plus event in um, in copenhagen because the nordics it's really a region that is positioned for strong growth and with that uh lorena do you have any did you get any questions hi josephine thanks so much for the presentation uh great to see the context of what's happening on in the Nordics market and also a little bit of the distribution and the comparison between the four countries is very useful. And indeed, we have been receiving a few questions from the audience and I invite the audience to please keep putting those in. Uh, perhaps, Josephine, you can see it as well in your chat box panel, but uh, if you'd like me to read them out to you, let me know. Yeah, well, I see one here where it was about the market conditions that would be met that would need to be met for Norway and Finland to grow their grow their markets. So with 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 Norway, well, I think with both with both markets, it's really about finding a way for end for end consumers. If you're talking about distributed generation, find a way for end consumers to fully benefit from from solar from their solar panels installed. Mm -hmm. if, but neither Finland and Norway, they're not you know, of of the of these countries. They don't have the the best the best solar solar resources um, as well. So you need to look at how to how you can use use the electricity, how you can self consume, how you can um, how you can uh, export to the grid. I mean, Finland now with the with this whole energy situation, uh, there might be more you know more more interest but it's still to get to, about clarifying that yeah clar clarifying the the regulation and what the end consumer really really gets mm -hmm. and what fees they have to pay and in Norway if electricity prices would become you know high 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 enough you know now they have this this uh, this support in place to uh, just just to avoid high electricity prices right because Norway has been so I'm taking a lot of pride in 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 its low electricity prices, both for consumers and industry. So there's just not maybe not the incentive there. It's, it's not there yet. I see. Then just out of curiosity, a follow up. Um, is there also then the need to perhaps educate this end consumers a little bit more? Is that something if they haven't felt the need before to install solar? Or is, is or is that the role of some or of developer more of a governmental push necessary? Well, I think I think you can see it uh, in Sweden, for example, just with this boom of of installations, is that when the in you know when the incentives are there, people get educated. Let's mm -hmm. let's, let's say like the companies will educate will will educate the end consumers and yeah it's it's kind of but it's kind of this um i mean the way the way i see pv always evolving is that for I me mean, first you have your like your neighbor installing a system and you think okay he's a bit of a freak that like why is he doing that and then you hear you know how like how little it costs or the benefits that that he's getting and what his electricity bill is you know that drives that drives more interest, and when you start seeing more and more installers, and and more talk about it, that's also self self generating. But of course, in the end, it's like really the it's, it's very much about economics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so educa educating you know, educating about the economics, but also not only economics but security, because I think that's what people are looking for now. It's about how do I make sure that my electricity bills are not going to give me you know, very big surprises. That's a great point. And I think with the focus on electricity prices in general in the news, everyone is becoming a little bit more aware of those dynamics and perhaps we'll see that yeah. shift. 
Exactly. And uh, yeah, I welcome you to to pick another question if you like. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a question here about the like not in my not in my back uh, backyard. That's I think, and that's mainly like for the for the Danish market with this high amount. If, if of, you, sorry, Josephine, if you don't mind, can I read out the question because yeah, many of our attendees yeah, can't see it. Yeah. So, is it the question regarding Denmark? Yeah, exactly. Uh, what is your input regarding population in favor or against large-scale solar PV utilities in their quote-unquote garden, their backyard, and how that will impact in the permitting process? What would be the best way to address these kinds of issues? And perhaps your experience in Spain can also be an added value here, since that happens uh, similarly. Oh, I, um, in now Denmark, with having having so much, you know, relatively much installed already, there are going to be regions where there are going to be regions where it's where you have solar parks, and they haven't actually they don't bother they don't they don't bother any anyone. And uh, then you're going to have areas where maybe a too big park, you know, that's that's in, that's enough, and we're not going to allow more more parks in that way. I think so. It's really much about distributing your developments as well, and to not focus on one one town. In Spain, I mean, just as a side side note, we've seen a lot. I mean, it's a, well, it's a different it's a different animal, right? The amount of applications, the amount of solar. But you just see some areas that have been so targeted with applications that, first of all, the local administ administrators are burdened, and uh, on the on the other hand, the, lo the locals themselves, when they see that there's so much interest, they're afraid that actually all of that is going to get built, and that's going to impact the permitting. Um, I think, mean, like always, it's important to work with the to be there to be present. I mean, what's now in favor of the Danish markets is that a lot of the developers they are local, and they can show that local. You know, it's it, these are local companies. They they understand they understand the market. It can be more of a challenge when you have a lot of external, like more international international companies that are maybe doing everything on a distance, which is you know, sometimes the situation in in Spain. But in Denmark, the companies are very present. They know the they know the locals, the local, the local Indeed. administrators, and so you have to have that local present and work with the work with the communities. And then, of course, having projects that are that make sense. I think all the talk now about like agrivoltaics, or at least working together to incorporate incorporate PV plants with the, with the environment. That's also very that's also very, very important. But like I said, some of these extremely big plants. I think that that might be challenging. You might end up going to small, you know, building smaller plants instead, just because that will that'll be more uh, logical from a from a permitting for permitting perspective. Mm -hmm. I see. So, like local presence is very very valuable. Although you did mention that there might be more international countries coming exactly. into the region. Exactly. But, exactly. So they will have to, you know, they will have to work with, of course, have to work with with locals. To, to get those projects, get those projects done. But maybe also these companies are going to come in when projects are more advanced. For sure. And what else? What else do we? What else do we have? Indeed. Um... So how close are we to true solar market parity? So the question is, how close are the Nordic markets to true solar market parity? I mean, it depends on which electricity price you wanna you wanna look at, right? Uh, when are you? Which which hour? Which which day? I think everyone can make their own their own their own charts and either say that we're at parity or we're we're not at not at parity. But I would say, given the given the amount of projects that are that are that are being developed, the amount of PPAs that are signed. I would say that, and I, and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said that, you know, ten years, ten years ago, I wouldn't, you know, the Nordics were still. When every time you do an LCOE analysis, it was like the Nordics, they, they're not, you know, there's not enough sun. But yeah, the economic, the, the economics are there. Maybe not for everyone, not for all projects, but yeah, we we see, and now with these electricity prices, I think we're 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 at at 
at parity or like at least solar is competitive. That's more how I like to like to talk about it. That's a great point. And indeed, keeping an eye out on the PPAs, I think, in the Nordics will be quite interesting since I see a lot of development happening based on that front. And um, definitely a conversation that we'll have in, at the Nordics event as well, focusing more on the PPA factor. Uh, but Josephine, unless you'd like to pick a question or not, I also invite you to perhaps give a final message and we can wrap up the webinar. I don't know if there's some kind of um, takeaway that you'd like the, our attendees to, to go home with. Well, I was it, besides besides just attend attend <laughs> attend the event, go to Copenhagen. We really have a you know have a look at at the Nordic uh, the Nordic market. This is really going to be a dynamic uh, dynamic market going forward, and there's a lot of potential, a lot of upside potential in terms of the distributed generation if we see regulators adapting to enable more, more solar going into residential and commercial installations. I think we'll, we might see more looking at Sweden and saying, okay, this is, this is the path, path to go. And let's see if we can get some more project development, large scale project development also in Finland. That would be very exciting. Mm -hmm. No, but Josephine, thank you so much for a very informative presentation. If you really put the context of the Nordic solar markets into place and what's quite a, uh, I don't want to say ironic, but last year our, our conference was in Sweden, in Stockholm, and this year we decided to move to Copenhagen, seeing as that as a market that was booming, and indeed it was, but perhaps we might make a move back to Stockholm in a few years if your analysis proves to be true. And it seems like it is going in that direction with the, both the utility and the residential uh, uh, solar growth. But indeed, thank you very much. And I invite our attendees to uh, send any additional questions they might have via email. We'll try to forward them through. And if you're still interested in the Nordisk market, please uh, invite you as well to be present at our Copenhagen event, the 29th of September. And you can use the discount code shown below. But Josephine, once again, thank you very much for, for being our present presenter today. And I hope to see you in the future in future webinars. Thank you, it's been my pleasure.